Okay, great, I have a terminal velocity. Now what do we ask next? If the object reaches 80% of its terminal velocity before striking the ground, show that the point from which it was dropped was about 511 meters above the ground. Okay, so how do I evaluate that? Have a think about this, right? Um, if we were to jump from some infinite height, okay, you're gonna have um, immediately and this force is acting on you. This force begins acting on you too, but at the start it's zero, right? Um, because you're um, falling from rest, so there's no resistive force on something that isn't moving to begin with. But this starts to increase, and eventually it's going to increase and increase and increase until it you know, gets arbitrary close to this weight force that's going downwards. But this question is telling us that we don't get there, right? The point, uh, or rather the object, is gonna strike the ground before it hits its terminal velocity. It's only gonna get to 80% of its terminal velocity. So I'm going to be solving for when that's going to be equal to zero. Okay, so being that this is going to be a displacement question and I have this answer up here for what I should get at the end, I'm gonna to need to take this force equation and I'm gonna to have to get it in terms of displacement instead of in terms of velocity, which is what I produced up here because you're never gonna solve this equation and get x equals 511 because there are no x's here to begin with. So therefore, let's write this, part B. Instead of writing force, F for force, I'm going to say force is mass times acceleration. So I'll write that as M uh, times uh, X double dot will do. I've been using that um, because I'm going to solve for X eventually. And that's equal to, uh, what did we say? It was going to be 980 take away V squared on 10. Okay, now at this point here, I can say, hold up a minute, um, I'm trying to solve uh, for x eventually, so I really just want this x double dot on its own, I'm gonna do some form of integration. So um, I don't know why I wrote that m there, because I already have the value for m, it's 100. So I'm gonna try and isolate that acceleration part of the equation on its own, I'm gonna divide through by uh, that mass. So that gives me 9.8, of course it does, because that's mass times, or rather, this is mass times gravity here, so dividing through by mass sends us back to gravity. And then you've got minus V squared on 1,000. Okay, now remember, like I said, my destination here is to get something with regard to displacement. So I need to introduce X's into this somehow, and I've already got V's. So the question, as we've posed many times before, is what form should I put acceleration in to make it easiest for me to get to the destination I'm after? Is it a time destination? Is it a displacement destination? Being that it's displacement this time, the most suitable form to write acceleration, I'm guessing, is going to be V dV on dx. Uh, you can see why that's useful because I have an expression, um, I have a, a function here in terms of v, so therefore having this v dv here means um, the left and right hand sides can play ball with each other. So I've still got that 9.8 minus v squared on 1000 on the right hand side. Okay, I can tidy up a little bit further. I'm going to try and get towards this separation of variables idea by dividing through both sides by v. So that'll give me a uh, Let's put this as 9.8 on V minus V on a thousand. Uh, and then what I want to do is I sort of want to get this right hand side together into a single fraction. You've seen this before because it will make integration uh, easier. So when I put this together, it looks to me like I'm going to get a denominator of a thousand V. So multiply this fraction by a thousand uh, and multiply this fraction by V. So that will make my denominator a thousand V, there's dV on dx, and now I'm ready to get all my V's on one side and all my X's on the other. So if I divide through, let's see here, by, uh, I might do one more thing to make this a bit easier for me to see. I'm gonna put a minus sign there, and that flips around the order of the difference on my numerator. Um, I want that because having a positive value for V in my what's going to become my denominator will just make integration easier, less minus signs flying around. Um, that's dV on dx there. Okay, now I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm going to divide through by everything you can see here without the minus sign. I'll leave that minus sign over there on the right hand side. So that will give me 1000 V all over V squared minus 9800. I will leave the dv where it is and I'll multiply through by dx on the right hand side. Uh, and this is more or less ready to go, right? I can integrate both sides, one with respect to v and one with respect to x. 
Uh, but don't forget, you know, when you have a look at this uh, integral that you're gonna get on the left-hand side, the integrand is almost in the form f dash on f. Um, the only difference is that if this is f, then the f dash I'm looking for is 2v. So in order to achieve that, if I think of this as 2v, that means there's going to be a 500 on the outside multiplying together to give me the 1000v that I actually have. Okay, so from there, um, what I'm going to do is get a 500, I'll do the integration now, log of v squared minus 9000 800, that's on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, I just get this nice linear function plus the constant that comes from both of the indefinite integrals. Okay, now at this point here, I've got this constant of integration to evaluate, how am I gonna do that? Well, I think back to what I know from the question. It says, we've got this object and it falls from rest. Where does it fall from? And the answer is, it falls from somewhere and we want to show that that's 511 meters above the ground But we can just define that place to be wherever we want and being that I'm you know Considering this whole downward journey as the entire thing. I'm not worrying about how it got up there You know, maybe it was a parachutist, uh, you know skydiver or something like that or a bomb or anything else that you might drop um, I don't care where it came from its particular destination. I'm just gonna call that the origin so I'm gonna say for convenience initially um, I've got a velocity of zero because it's falling from rest and x equals zero if the drop point is the origin. And I can just define it as that and everything else will kind of fall into line. So if I've got a v and I've got an x of zero, how convenient, that will let me evaluate the constant fairly straightforwardly. So I'm going to get 500 log of, um, when you put in the v equals zero, you get negative 9,800 over there on the right, uh, left rather, and you get zero plus c over there on the right. So I've got my value for c, that's going to be equal to just that uh, left hand side there. So I'm going to substitute that back into uh, the line I had above, so therefore 500, in fact I can be even lazier than that, this is the line up above, so I'll just grab that there. That's going to be equal or added to 500 log of my negative, there we go, 9800, alright, and now what I want to do here is I just want to rearrange this a teeny bit, right? If I add x to both sides, that will make x positive, and now it's the subject, and then I'm going to subtract this term from both sides. So this term is going to stay put on the left, and then what I'm going to do is subtract this term that I got over here uh, on the left hand side, so let's duplicate that over here. You can see I can do some factorization and even combination of these logs. So once you have 500 out the front and then you've got these two log terms, when you subtract a log we know that's the quotient of the terms on the inside. So therefore, let's draw some nice big fat brackets there, I'll get negative 9800 on the numerator and I'm going to get uh, v squared minus 9800 on the denominator. That's what's equal to x. Okay, now, uh, wh what was I trying to solve, right? I was trying to solve for uh, where the object was dropped from, which I've defined as the origin, and the way I can know where it was dropped from is because when you impact the ground, you're going to reach a velocity of 80% of the terminal velocity, right? And I already worked that out in part A. So I can say the object will reach 80% of the terminal velocity, which was, I just, I think I denoted that as V with a T subscript for terminal, uh, V, T, when V equals, well, it's just uh, 0.8, there's my 80%, times the 99 meters per second that I worked out earlier, which is 79.2 if you go and check that on your calculator. So all I'm gonna do is take that value of V and substitute it into my displacement equation because here is displacement in terms of any given velocity. So I should be able to find the place where the velocity hits this just by substituting it in. So I'm going to get X equals 500, times log of that negative 9,800 is up the top, and then I'm gonna get 79.2 squared minus 9,800 on the bottom. And if you go ahead and you evaluate that, what you're gonna find is it's 510.916 some other stuff, if I'm remembering correctly, um, which of course rounds to 511. But think about what this means, right? 
I'm defining the drop point up above wherever I, I fell from as x equals zero and then I drop in the positive direction, right? I've defined downward as positive. So therefore, um, my displacement is 511 meters below wherever I came from. And that's when I hit this 80% of terminal velocity. So therefore I can conclude if, if I drop from zero, and 511 meters downward is how far I traveled, then where did I drop from? Answer, 511 meters above the ground because that is the difference between them. So I can conclude that if I use a pen instead of the laser pointer. Um, therefore, object drops 511 meters above the ground. And that's my conclusion. So uh, what things do we need to keep in mind here? Number one, read the question really carefully to determine what kind of force or acceleration equation you're going to write. You can see um, if, for example, I had an M in here um, and had, you know, this was multiplied by 100, um, you would not get this terminal velocity of 99 because the model that we had created in an equation wouldn't match this information that was provided in the question. That's the first thing. The second thing is, Terminal velocity, um, even though it doesn't tell you, doesn't spell this out, if you think about what terminal velocity means, which is when force, um, the net force approaches zero because you're not getting faster and you're not slowing down, really, um, then you can use that to you know, evaluate the terminal velocity just by solving for when that force is equal to zero. Um, and then lastly, um, when you think about this question of uh, find the point from which it was dropped and show that it's, particular, it's equal to a particular value, you might not get told that value. Here at least we knew where we were headed, so that's why when I got this number, I was like, check, I am headed in the right direction, quite literally. Um, think carefully about what you're defining. Uh, like say, for example, here I've defined the, uh, the drop point as the origin and then I've sort of gone from there. Think carefully about what you're defining as where and then uh, interpret your results like 511. That's actually how far I've dropped um, in the downward direction and then use that to actually answer the question.